You might have noticed that I've been building a lot of workstations lately. Okay, you haven't seen this one yet, but this is another system based around the eight channel W790 platform. And again, I've gone with the Asus Sage motherboard. There's the Sage and the Ace. The Ace, horizontal slot, vertical slot. You should watch my W790, why you gotta be weird if you're just getting included on, on W790. It's kind of the new high-end desktop, but also simultaneously workstation. I, I can't recall another time in history except maybe the very early sort of dawn of desktop computing where you could mix and match CPUs and chipsets this liberally. But that also means that we need registered error correcting memory. We're, see, we're in a weird spot where DDR5 for the higher capacities, meaning registered DIMMs, is not physically compatible with the non-registered counterparts. You see, we did have some enthusiast platforms that were DDR4 where you could use error correcting memory or registered error correcting memory although it was a software choice that you could use either one which was kind of a portent of what had to come with the ddr5 because the signaling speeds are so high but that also means that we finally have registered error correcting memory that is also insanely fast and that is what the g skill memory kits are the zeta r5s are here g skills kind of taking a chance on this because i've hit them up in the past about this kind of thing all the way back in the early ddr4 days saying we need this they're like no you don't well here we are and yes we do well, let's take a closer look now uh disclaimer alert uh, i've got the four channel kit and the eight memory channel kit. G Skills sent me one of these kits. I bought the other one because I'm a crazy person. I actually probably would have bought both of them if I uh, hadn't said, well, we saw your first video and you know, hey, would you like to do another video? And I said, yes, because this is their 32 gigabyte kit. Actually, this one just entered the market. I could not pick this one up because it's 32 gig DIMMs. There's 256 megabytes of lovingly hand binned DDR5-6000. And I know what you're saying, DDR5-6000 is nothing new. This is because it is registered error correcting memory. Registered error correcting memory in my system? Oh uh, yeah, it's more likely than you think. And the first platform to support that are these Xeon W systems. And in fact, G-Skill puts on their box Xeon W 3400X the X marks the spot for reasonable memory bandwidth for Xeon W2400X. So this box, it's thinner. There are four DIMMs in here. Well, actually, no, I've, I've already put them in here. This box is thicker. Thick. This is eight memory sticks in here. They go in there. Let's take a closer look. Eight memory kits, ah! Now, I noticed some of you in the level one forums have been building systems. Can't wait for workstation CPUs. You've been building server systems. One of the comments that we get fairly regularly is, hey, where do I get a server kit of memory? So this is, there's a lot of love and magical special sauce that go into this, but for a server, server memory looks like this. <laughs> this is a tray that contains 25 sticks of DDR5 registered error correcting memory. This is, this is how you order a kit of memory from a vendor. It, it comes like this, and this is just how it comes off of the assembly line. They don't do any bending or special picks or anything like that. And this is also up to 4,800 max speed. There are some resellers that are taking these 25 at a time, testing them at 5,600 and reprogramming them, but understand that it is physically the same DIMM. And that's also a really worse and bad version of what G-Skill is actually doing, which is actually a good thing that they're doing. It's not this, this is, this, is something, this is something else entirely. And so most of the time when you buy server memory, you just have this really complicated part number and you just buy the same part number and it doesn't matter. I mean, they could have been manufactured at different times, blah, blah, blah. The memory is looser, the timings are, are looser, but it's, as long as it's from the same vendor, it's the same part number, like the actual part number, then you generally are not gonna have a problem in server land. But in desktop land, that's not really true. Why is that? The reason is because of the need for speed. So what G-Skill has done is they lovingly hand bend their chips, even down to the chip level. Gosh, would it be fun to do a video on this? Like the G-Skill like memory process and all the stuff that goes into that? I think that would be a super interesting video. You should comment below if you say something along the lines of like, hey, G-Skill, it would be really awesome to understand more about your process for bending and putting these together. Because you know, G-Skill's not running a fab. They're not producing their own silicon, 
but they are doing award-winning designs that run at DDR5-6000 and get way more out of the memory than the manufacturer really intended. And even doing the testing down to the chip level, getting it to run at DDR5-6000. Which is why I was super interested in error correcting memory way back when, before this whole registered error correcting DDR memory thing happened. And G-Skill, historically, has always done a really amazing job, which is why I'm doing this video because I really like them for this use case, and I really love seeing DDR5-6000 on workstation-ish platforms. In my mind, the trade-off is worth it, because it's not really an overclock. We've, we've sort of figured out the science here, and for at least the last three generations of memory, the enthusiasts that actually have access to this enterprise gear is what is driving the next generation of standards. The standards committee people are not moving fast enough. And so the people that learn the most from this process of making this run at DDR5-6000, more or less, I mean, some of this is a little bit revolving door when we're talking about employment and people moving around in the industry and blah, blah, blah. But that process of doing this magic for crazy people like us watching the video is what leads to the very next standard actually being amazing. Like, oh, their server DDR5 is running at 4,800 or 4,000 if we have two dims per channel. But then it's like, nah, let's figure out the madness and put this together. Have you seen Buildzoid's videos about going to the nth degree of just, you know, proc ODT and memory termination and like all the little stuff like that? Yeah, there's folks that don't necessarily get to make YouTube videos on that. Doing that in the industry on the inside, driving the innovation, trying to figure the stuff out to you know, sort of crack the formula, and that's what drives the next generation of actual server memory. And so you might have noticed in the box it comes with a little memory card thing, and it says on the card that you shouldn't mix memory kits. But all of that spiel that I just gave you, that's why you shouldn't mix memory kits. It's because this memory from the memory manufacturer was never designed to run this fast, or at this voltage. But G-Skill has done the hard-won, loving work in order to make that happen. So that's why it says don't mix kits, is because this kit has all been tested together. And that's also why with server memory, you don't generally buy server memory in kits. You just buy to a specification and the memory follows the specification. But this specification is so exacting that you buy it as a kit. Mm, now you know. So if you're interested in either one of these models, there's a link below, a forum thread on the Level 1 Text Forums is talking a little bit more about my experiences putting this together. And like I say, eight 32 gigabyte DIMMs in our kit here. That is a quite a bit of memory. 256 gigabytes of memory. Oh, and in case you're wondering, would this stuff, hypothetically speaking, work at DDR5 5600 if I had a 96 core processor running a server? The answer is yes, it, it does. You're gonna have to have a motherboard that supports that. And it's not really technically an overclock, although running an SP5 CPU at those memory speeds is neither recommended nor supported by AMD. Let me be very clear about that. But it is possible on some motherboards to run DDR5-600 with an AMD EPIC server CPU, assuming that your server CPU is good enough, a little bit of silicon lottery plays a thing there. And when you do that, you will have world record breaking memory bandwidth and throughput performance for a 12 channel system because you're the only one that's managed to figure out how to get DDR5-5600 to run in a YouTuber setting. Obviously they got this working in the lab setting, they just don't wanna sort of draw attention to themselves. I haven't done anything magical, in other words. I'm just sort of piggybacking on the magic that G-Skill has done in the lab. But you're gonna have to wait for that video. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Good job, G-Skill. These are in the market now, eight memory channels. The four memory channels were there before, but this is pretty much the only choice if you're gonna build a four or eight channel system around your X-Series Xeon, or at least DDR5-6000 should be your only choice registered error correcting, if you are building one of these fancy pants DDR5 based workstations. And I'm sure that we're gonna see a DDR5 based workstation, not server, CPU, sometime in 2023. And these will be highly applicable to that situation as well. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. I'm Woodless Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Let's chat, see ya.